This video is brought to you by Squarespace, an all-in-one platform to build a beautiful online presence. Sawadee Welcome to Hot Thai Kitchen. So today's recipe, I'm gonna bet most of you have never heard of or had before. I mean, even me, I only found out about it recently because it is a northern Thai dish called gang kanun. So gang means curry and kanun is jackfruit. Now, if you hear jackfruit and you're thinking that sweet yellow thing that you see in Asian desserts, this is not that. I mean, it's the same fruit, but we're gonna use the young green version of it so it's not yet sweet. And it basically works like a vegetable in soups and stews, great in curries. And it's a really easy curry recipe and super healthy as well. Let's get started. So the protein you're gonna need for this, and it's a classic protein, is pork ribs. If you don't eat pork, you can also do chicken wings, but the key here is you want bone in protein and wings are great because it's got such a high proportion of bones and the bones are what's going to make the broth flavorful and delicious. So no boneless, skinless anything in this recipe, okay? So the pork, if you go to an Asian store, you're going to find spare ribs that are cut either into small pieces or into a long strips like this. And that's what we want because you want nice small pieces that we can work with in the soup. If you can only find the full length ribs, it will also work. It's just gonna be a little bit more clunky in the soup, but flavor-wise, it works fine. Okay, so I'm going to cut this down into individual ribs, cut in between the bones. And it's important to kind of keep an eye on the size of each ribs because you know that sometimes you buy these ribs and there's a lot of bones and very small amount of meat. And then other times it's a lot of meat and then small bones. And that's important because it's gonna determine your cooking time. So now I'm getting to the end of the rib where you're gonna not see a lot of bones. This part you wanna cut smaller so that the thickness of the meat is about the same as the thickness of the meat that was around the bone. All right. So the pork's gonna take about an hour to cook. So I wanna get that going first. So I'm gonna drop them into my hot water right here. You don't have to wait for it to come to a boil. If the meat around the ribs are quite chunky, it's gonna take an hour to maybe hour and 15 minutes. But if they're not as chunky, 45 minutes sometimes does it. While that is simmering, we don't wanna just let it simmer in plain water. You're gonna give it some seasoning to some fish sauce, more to come. But meanwhile, let's look at the jackfruit. So here is my jackfruit and it comes in a can and you wanna make sure the can says young jackfruit and there's absolutely no yellow anything on the label because if there is, you're getting the wrong jackfruit that will absolutely not work for this, okay? So this part is the core of the jackfruit. You wanna cut that down. I don't really like this part, but you know, let's not waste it, but I basically leave it for someone else to eat. This is gonna be firm and the tender part is gonna be here where it's sort of like the fibrous part. So this is the part that will grow up into a yellow jackfruit. Again, if the core is really big, feel free to cut that down to two pieces. And then this is quite chunky, maybe I'll do three. It's like just my preference that I like smaller pieces and you can see how fibrous this looks. And this is why a lot of trendy hipster vegan recipes like to use young jackfruit as a meat substitute because when you cook it down and you shred it, it has that, that look kind of like pulled pork. It doesn't have the same chew as meat. It's quite tender, but you know, you can kind of fool one into thinking that, oh, look at that plate of barbecued pulled pork. And now all the jackfruit's gonna go in. My grandmother actually makes a very different kind of jackfruit curry that I, I think she made up. I've never seen anyone else makes it. And she cooks the jackfruit so long that it actually like falls apart into like that pulled pork consistency. And it's so good. So again, you can't really overcook these. One day I'll share that recipe with you. I have to find it out from her first. Okay, so while that is going, we're gonna make our curry paste. So the curry paste is gonna be is actually the simplest curry paste I've ever made on Hatai Kitchen. There's only four ingredients, which are the core ingredients of any Thai curry paste. First being dried chilies. Um, I'm just using this 
nondescript diachilis that I got at the Asian grocery store. You can use any kind. You can use the milder, larger ones if you want, or if you want it spicy, use the Thai spicy ones. It's up to you. So I never used these before, so we're gonna find out how spicy these are. Um, but to lessen the heat, if you'd like, you can cut them and pour out the seeds. If you want to reduce the heat even more, you can take the time to open it up and remove the pith this little fiber here that holds all the seeds together. That's where most of the heat is. But to me, that's too much work. Just pouring out the seed is enough for me. So now traditionally they would just hand pound this in a mortar and pestle, but that takes a lot of time. So to save time, I like to put this in a coffee grinder. FYI, I don't use this for coffee. Pro tip, let it settle before you open the lid and do not put your head directly over it while you open it. Yeah, that's good enough for me. This paste does not need to be super smooth like a coconut curry paste, so I am happy with that. All right, let's finish it up. We got only three more ingredients. We got shallots, garlic, and also fermented shrimp paste. So you need some sort of a, a fermented funk in this. If you don't have shrimp paste, uh, in the north sometimes they use plara, which is an unfiltered fermented fish sauce, I guess. It's a lot more pungent than regular fish sauce. But if you don't have anything, just put a ton of fish sauce in it or maybe some miso paste if you want. Um, but definitely you want that umami funk from something fermented, okay? So super simple. I'm gonna just pound everything in the mortar and pestle until it's a uh, paste. <laughs> I'm <laughs> It's a very sentimental thing. It reminds me of Thailand. Okay, so once it starts to, once the shallots start to give off liquid, um, you might find it helpful to add the dry chilies back in at this point and it'll give a little bit more friction and make things less slippery and sloshy. Maybe just a little at a time. Actually, I wanna do all of it. Okay, this paste does not need to be super fine because all the soft herbs are gonna just kind of dissolve as it cooks in the curry anyway, so I'm happy with just that. <coughs> oh my goodness, the paste is biting back. Uh, I'm going to just add my shrimp paste just to get it mixed up. All right, let's put this in the curry. So the pork still has quite a ways to go, which is great because we're gonna put the curry paste in. So now the pork and the jackfruit can actually absorb the curry flavor. Oh, that looks good already. And the pork probably at this point has another good 45 minutes to go because it only took us a few minutes to do the curry paste. All you have to do is let this go until the pork is fork tender. And then we're gonna add our vegetables and then it's done. How easy is that? Before we move on, I'd like to tell you more about today's sponsor, Squarespace. So if you've got a project in mind, whether you wanna start a blog, you wanna sell something online, or you wanna revamp your portfolio, whatever it is, you probably need a website of some sort. Well, Squarespace makes it really easy to do. You can get your domain, build your website, and host it all in one place. And the most important part, you don't need to know how to code at all. My husband built his portfolio with Squarespace and he got it up and running super quick and it looks fantastic. They have lots of features built right into the platform like SEO tools, blog analytics, or even members only areas so you can monetize your content. So whatever your needs are, Squarespace probably has it covered. So head over to squarespace.com for a free trial and when you're ready to launch, make sure you go to squarespace.com slash kitchen to save 10% off your first website or domain. All right, the pork is almost done. Let's talk vegetables, which is actually the hard part about this. So there are three vegetables classically added to this in addition to the jackfruit. One is cherry tomatoes. The other one is wild beetle leaves or baicha plu. And you can find this at some Asian markets, especially ones that sell a lot of Vietnamese vegetables. If you can't find this, you can use other leafy greens like Chinese broccoli or Swiss chard. This does have a flavor, but what you're gonna do if you can't get it, right? Now, the other vegetable that's usually added to this also has a flavor and it's cha om, um, which I can't even find myself. So what I've discovered is 
Chrysanthemum greens work really well as a substitute. You can find this at Chinese supermarkets written in English as Tong Ho. I don't know how to pronounce that in Chinese. Um, but it also has a very distinct flavor and I think it just works beautifully in this. If you can't find anything, just try to figure out like what's a vegetable that has a flavor. You don't want mild greens in this, like asparagus maybe, or Adam, what's a vegetable with a flavor? Spinach? No, spinach has no flavor. Why am I asking somebody who doesn't cook for... Spinach has no flavor. No, spinach... <laughs> So with the chrysanthemum greens, just into bite-sized pieces. And they look so pretty and this will shrink down a lot. Down to the stems, you might want to do smaller pieces. Okay. And then with the beetle leaves, you just want to do strips. I mean, it's, it's a curry. You can cut it however you want. Doesn't really matter. Just as long as it's easy to consume. Mmm. God, I love that smell. And these will just take a few seconds to cook. So you want to add this when the curry is done, which it basically is. I am going to give it a taste. Oh, that's good. Oh, I can smell that funk from the shrimp paste, but it does need some more salt, which in this case is going to be fish sauce. Boop, 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 boop. Mmm, yeah. Oh, so good. So good, so good. Okay, the tomatoes go in. And it's gonna look like there's no room for anything anymore, but it'll all wilt. And also you can top this off with some more water if it's evaporated too much. This is a lot of chrysanthemum greens. Maybe I don't need all of it. <laughs> so give this a few minutes to wilt. See? It does wilt down a lot, a lot. But I may add just a touch more water anyway, just so it's not so crowded in there. Okay, that's good. I'm gonna do a final taste test because we've messed with it a bunch. Oh, I think it's still good. I don't need any more salt. Mm, perfect, let's get some rice on. No, the rice is already on. Let's get some rice on the plate. Wow. Looks kind of like a tomato soup, but most of that red is chilies. Okay, enough dishing, let's eat. Definitely want to make sure you get some jackfruit there. I don't want the core piece. Give me, why am I getting only the core piece? I want the shreddy parts. There you go. Lots of broth and some pork ribs there we go okay let's do the jackfruit first because that is see how it's sort of like shredding that's the pulled pork imitation i was talking about but it's really quite tender and if you ask me i don't think it tastes anything like meat but other people may disagree To follow that up with some pork which is super tender that's what you want mm. oh pork is so good i don't know why people here don't cook more with pork such a delicious meat especially in soups like this if you've never had young jackfruit before there is nothing i can compare it to it has its own flavor but it's it's mild, it's not strong, but it's definitely there. It's not just like a piece of something absorbing other flavors. And when I was a kid, I really didn't love it. But as an adult, I've grown to really appreciate the flavor of young jackfruit. And that along with the shallots and garlic and the chilies and that umami funk from the shrimp paste, it, it's just such a wonderfully rustic Thai flavored dish that is that is very like I, I eat that and it really brings me back home because there's nothing it's 
nothing I compare to I can compare to with here. So I hope you give this a try. It's really something different, and I know the ingredients are a little bit tricky to find, but if you've got an Asian market nearby, you can probably find a thing or two that'll still work. So the recipe, as always, will be on hatthaikitchen.com. And a special thanks to our Patreon members who make the show possible. Also, if you're interested in joining us, you can watch my videos ad-free and get bonus content. So if you're interested, you can check out info in the link below. If you make this dish, tag me at Hot Thai Kitchen on social media everywhere. I'd love to see your creation. Thank you as always for watching and I will see you next time for your next delicious Thai meal.